Yes. Okay. So Ryan Tov, everyone, on this 13th day of Mar Cheshvam, we're in the Sefer Eshpoich, the fun of Sihi. We started the chapter Tanos Famatla Ot, claims, criticisms, so to speak, and excuses. And we're trying to understand what these criticisms are because we know you're not allowed to criticize Hashem for anything. So we began the answer. And we were saying that the, uh, the uh, there's a concept the Gemara brings of defeating Hashem. And what does it mean to defeat Hashem, that tzaddikim defeat Hashem? And we're saying that the point of the world is to reveal God's reality in this world. And that there are people that uh, who have coronated Hashem in the greatest way possible. So Hashem gives part of the realm to them to reveal Hashem. And that's where we ended off yesterday. And now he wants to, uh, the author is giving some introductions to understand this Torah from Rabbi Nachman that explains this idea. So that's where we're up to. And therefore we're on page Reish, I and Dalid, near the top. Torah Zu, this essay from Rabbi Nachman, it's not speaking about pouring your heart over suffering and pain. It's talking about claims and excuses. Words of appeasement that are said to bring one close to Hashem. Similarly to what Rabbi Nachman said that when somebody does a lot of sins, and he wrote to this Israeli person has to strengthen himself after he sins and says, still in all, I want to be a Jew. It comes out, he wants to defeat Hashem, as it were. And Hashem has a joy where, as it were, people defeat Hashem. That's what he says in another one of the Sikhs Harat. So what does all this mean? So Hashem is Baruch Baruchanu, Big Day Shinasas with Son. Hashem created us in order to do his will. Shinavdu Bachal Leva Nefesh, to serve him with our whole heart and soul. But Derek Lishos Lazan, the way we merit that is Adit Vila, which is prayer. Shigam Ikar Abhira, which is also the primary aspect of free will choice. Like the Rebbe taught us in the 52nd essay. The way to merit, to nullify the lusts for this world. And to purify the naturally bad mitos of a person. It's prayer and supplication. And that's what the rabbis say. What is service of the heart? That's prayer. And Rabbi Nos explains, It's not the service of the heart, but the service to purify the heart. Happens through prayer. In other words, not only the Pashup Shad is service of the heart is to pray, but the service that refines the heart comes through prayer. Why? When a person is, dis, feels, is distant, Hashem is Rachavi Sula Karma. Hashem really wants to bring him close. Who Kore La Adam Shiava Vyashal Fano. He calls the person to come and sit before him. Yishbach Libo to pour us out. Yispalel and pray. As the words of the Sil Sharm says, Yisavi Yitremo to have a back and forth dialogue with Hashem. Amatso about his situation, Al Rikuka, why he's distance, while Ritzonal has Karifala and his desire to get close. Okay. So now, when we keep the shade of the gates of the Sadr's firm, since the one who prays doesn't know how to arrange his words, so how do you have a give and take with Hashem? 
How can he express words in his heart in a way that the words nullify the decrees? Even though if a person has criticisms on God's conduct with him, he's just a physical human being. How can the person complain to Hashem? He doesn't understand how Hashem runs the world. So this is part of the question. How is it possible that a person is going to explain to Hashem why he thinks he's just? How does he think he can beat Hashem with his arguments? That's the question, just rephrasing the question on a deeper level. But the point is, and now we're going to begin to get to the answer. Hispodus is not built on what's coming out of the mouth of the one who prays. Or not on his intelligence and his skills. The way he can clearly express himself. It has nothing to do with any of this. So what is the success of Hispodus? What's it built on? It's built on this. It's built on the fact that Hashem places the word of the supplicant in his mouth in prayer as as tanos, as claims. As you're complaining against the Hashem is putting the claim in. And that's what the Rebbe says in teaching 124. Gemara Psachim says, Zamro, let's give song to the one that we defeat and he's happy. Explains Rabbi Nachman. When a person speaks before Hashem and explains the speech with claims and requests, he wants to ask the word defeat Hashem. Hashem is rachiyeshul tarim. Is Hashem a solution of this? Al kain and since Hashem gives pleasure, al kain sholeach lo diburim min hashamayim. Hashem sends him words from heaven. Bideishul and atzecha so kaviyachol, so that the person can defeat him. Kedei lekabel atanik, so Hashem will get the pleasure. Kivalo said, without that, there's no way a person can defeat Hashem. But it's Hashem himself prepares and sends the claims and accusations to defeat Akadosh Baruch. Whoa, this is getting way beyond our control. And he says in the 156th Torah, that which you say between yourself and Hashem, it's an aspect of divine inspiration. As we've mentioned this Pasuk many times, to you my heart says, on your agency, I say what's in my heart. All the words that the heart says are really the words of Hashem. Continue. That's the aspect of Ruach HaKodesh. You have to renew constantly. Every time you supplicate and say words, new words, you should merit that purity of heart. Then you will merit Every time to have new words, which is an aspect of Ruach HaKodesh. End quote of Rabbi Nachman. So what's going on over here? So he's unpacking it. Uh, so If the words and the accusations are at the doorstep of one of praise, He's not allowed to even think of those ideas. There's no way a person can defeat Hashem. Even if he has in his mind good arguments, 
could be there's nothing to them. So who could go into the secrets of Hashem to understand his conduct? But also look at an addition. He can also further be endangering himself and be com- committing a crime on his soul to say words that are not fitting. Shame Kedai Lomi shouldn't say them. Shame Nilsom is considered like KTF from Klappi Bell. You're throwing words up against Hashem. All bad stuff. That's when you are starting it. But on Rish, I am what we continue. A love who knows this now shall obey some miftah. But when Hashem, in his mercy, who loves Hashem, and the power is with Hashem, and the person turns his soul and he places his trust in Hashem of what he should say. Hashem sends him a very proper prayer from it. Tanos Vamatlos claims and excuses. So that he should defeat Hashem Yismale. Tanugo and to fulfill Hashem's pleasure. That's why Hashem created the world. Now, Hashem doesn't only send claims or victory. But it's claims and excuses. Claims and requests. The goal of the words is to get close to Hashem. He says, look at the words of Rabbi Nassim again. How to pray. Really to do it and to fulfill these words. And this is part of the prayer of Rabbi Nassim. Open your heart to the mute one like myself. Send me words from the, well, the, the, the residents of your residents from heaven. But open in a way that I can defeat you. To, to um, uh, appease you. Meaning, when a person sits before Hashem, Hashem influences the words from heaven, pours them out. The words that come out are from the mouth of Hashem. In other words, if Hashem is telling you what to say, they got to be good words. These words, there's certainly no iniquity in these words. The most complete and perfect words imaginable. Because these are words only Hashem can create. These are claims and victories that Hashem sends into the heart and to the mouth of the one who davens. When Hashem sends words from his heavenly repository, he sends claims and excuses. The idea of victory isn't for the sake of victory. It's not, I want to win to win. Why do we want him to win? So we can train who Ella clearly scattered him. So it's a tool to get close to Hashem. Okay, mitzarfam, all right, and Rav Nassim, that's why Rav Nassim always puts them together in the prayers. But open shuchal and not say, it's not a way that I can defeat you, but lirtzos levais also to appease you. So those are two opposites, aren't they? To defeat you, together with Lirtzos Lefaisos, to appease you. So you got to say that the Taina Shem Chelik means You got to say that the claims are part of these Bodus. Ain't a little Taina Sazem. They can't be criticisms to us. What's, what's he mean? He's clarifying. And then who can be to us? We're not talking about complaints. But misowning him, when you have misowning him, like when they wanted the uh, mm-hmm. quails. But other more more because a per- person is you know grumbling, he's angry. When you complain, you're usually angry, you know. We're not talking about that. Or people, we're not talking about people who make a claim. I deserve what I've done. 
that's coming from anger. That's coming from, uh, what do you call it? Uh, confrontation. Onoskin Batinus El Talking about claims to Hashem, not against Hashem. Claims that are tied together with appeasement. Like it says in the Lakut Philos many times, you're a merciful father, have mercy on me. He already began to save me. It doesn't fit. You should stop saving me. That's not a criticism of anger. Chaim Arani writes, Shapam Shal Echem Ebeani Uri Masrabeno Echli Spotos. Once one of the students asked Rebbe, How do you do his photos? And he said, You say to Hashem like this, Hey, talk and Shavru, your my behavior, because it's possible I could let my life go by with all these vanities. Vishfil Kach, no Tsarti, and that's why you created me. Or as the Rebbe says in Yiddish, okay, good luck on me on this one. Should my whole world go away from me? Bin ich dein von dest wegen bashef in Gevor? Was I created for this purpose? These words are like a criticism. It's a way of asking words. In other words, you say, Hashem, you mean to say my whole life should be a waste? Now, how do you understand that? Is that a criticism? In a way. But in the, it's a criticism that's mixed with supplication. In other words, it's almost like saying, Hashem, how, how can you let me just drift around like this? I have no, I have no focus. I'm not sure what I'm doing. My whole life should be wasted. So it's a combination of criticism and asking for, so in other words, and so I help me out. Right. That's what he said. Yeah, question? So what was the caveat that Nachman said about as long as you have a lift to horn? In the past page. Because lift to horn means you're not questioning Hashem's actions. If you're, if you're, que- if you're saying Hashem's wrong, that's no good. But the claim isn't coming from a place of just complaining. Mm-hmm. It's 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 a type of a complaint slash a plea. But the plea is is strong, and it's saying, you know, how 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 is it possibly going to let my life go by without giving me any help? Not saying, you know, you're wrong. I got criticisms with you. Now, let's get to it. He keeps explaining. These words seem to be out of touch with reality. How am I going to merit this? So he starts with a question. Sometimes the reader may reflect. You think there's just imagination. How can a person reach such a level? How can you reach such a level to talk to Hashem this way? People wonder, how is that possible? The wonder is even stronger on someone who's a very low, deficient level. A person is finding himself in a terrible descent. He has no idea of knowing what Hashem wants with him. In other words, the person going to ask, is it possible such a small, distant person like me? Am I, am I that important that Hashem is going to send me heavenly words? That's a problem. It says, what are you talking about? Hashem is going to give me these words. Hashem is going to give you the right words of correct, humble criticism. For a shmo like me, that's what we're wondering. How are these words going to come out? But the truth of the matter is, the answer is, we say this on Yom Kippur. Hashem is not interested that the person should die. He wants the Russia to come back and do chuv and live. 
So now the question is, Kate said, Efshar Lush, how do you get back to Hashem? How do you get leave parted me How do you separate yourself from the coarse, vulgar physicality? To purify yourself from the lusts of the world that have no rest in your mind and have no limitations. How is it possible to merit, to feel from the depths of your heart pain and true misery over one's sins? How can that happen? Al yedet tefillah, through prayer. That's what you say. Hashem is for a chafetz bo, a chafetz bo. Kitvar Hashem is for Hashem wants like what Hashem said to Moshe. That tell the Jewish people, Eye, Asher, Eye. I will be with all of you. Eye, Ime, Shia, Ime. I will be with those that are with me, as the Ramban explained. This Pasuk was said when the Jews are in Egypt Hashem told these words to Moshe when the Jews are on the 49th level of impurity but in the depths of their hearts what so we struggle with they really wanted to get out of it and that certainly is a proper verse that was not that far away the Jews were as far as far could be and Hashem says, I will be with those who are with me. And Hashem took them out. And therefore, when we keep in Shechav, it's by Hashem. Hashem wants us. This is the point we have to realize. Hashem wants us. So, Shalech Yisbach, Barachmon, so, Betu, Bachas, so, Hagodol, so, Ain, so. Therefore, Hashem, with his great mercy, he sends from the infinite mercy, he sends us. So words that will help us defeat him. To appease him. To say claims and excuses. That's the only way a person can pray. That he should pray that his heart should feel the pain of his sins. That's the only way a person can bring out of his heart the fact that he was so distant from Hashem and rebelled against him. His eyes will see, his ears will hear, his heart will understand, he will do tshuva. As tshuva, this tshuva, which is, as har goshas which is the feeling of the heart, it's received through prayer and supplication. And therefore, the rabbis instant the bracha. We'll say it mincha shirli. Hashimeinu Hashem alech. Hashem, help us return. Bachsireinu bishus alecha, and return us with complete shluma before you. Now, of course, we ask, what about what about free will choice? How can Hashem force me to do tshuva? Certainly, there's the part of free choice that a person has to exercise. You can't just have Hashem do it all. Asher gam im humuat ma'od, even if it's a little bit of free will choice, avalukai, but it exists. The main choice are the prayers and the supplications. What's the main part of tshuva and purifying our coarseness? And beat Lamidas or else and nullifying the bad attributes, the key to Shagufa Gashbri and sanctifying our physical body. Shef Shalasaka says that rock, you can only merit it through prayers and supplications. Read Sweepusim appeasement, Tainos Vamatlaws, claims and excuses, as we will as we will have and will explain. Now came therefore, Mipnesh is what this is the goal. That that's why a person was created in this world to get close to Hashem and to purify himself. That's what Hashem wants in the creation. So Hashem sends words from heaven so that he can defeat him. To bring claims and excuses. The Rasmus of so to appease Hashem. And she is colossal with Jewish slam until he merits to return in total chuva. Will his house by Dragal Madrega, Adam Madrega's field till he goes level and level until he reaches that level of be tall self nullification of Borashem. 
Should have Mekayim as Mitzvah, and he fulfilled the Mitzvah with Daf Kabal to cling to him, which is the goal of creation, as the Chobos HaVavos tells us. So what, what, what have we been saying over here? There's a lot of words we've been saying. So what is, it's the end of this chapter, because we're going to move on to our Matla Os, which are excuses. <clears throat> so what, what is the Rebbe saying here? The Rebbe is saying, we don't just go from our own understanding and start listing a, a, a litany of complaints to a Kodesh Baruch. That's not what it's about. What it's about is the person is praying to Hashem and saying, Hashem, I don't know what the right words are. I'm asking you to give me the right words. I'm asking you to give me words that will that you will help put into me, that will give me a certain sense of boldness and humility at the same time. And therefore, these words that you are yourself could never express. But Hashem can give you those words. And when you say those words, they really hit the mark. And that's what he's saying. I just don't start off criticizing Hashem. Okay, I'm going to start his photos. I got a whole list of complaints that I've been thinking about the whole day long. I've been writing them down all day. Here's my complaint. No, 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 no. That you cannot do. What you do is you don't remember. His photos comes with no lists. His photos. When a person is in solitude talking to Hashem, we've already discussed so many things that you're doing. You start by praising a Kaddish Baruch Hu. You say, you've been so kind to me. You've been so good to me. You care about me more than I care about myself. And you, and then you start talking about, remember, you're, you're going to be the, 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 the prosecution, the defense, the judge, and the, the person that's on trial all at the same time. And you're going to say, I know Hashem, you're so great. You've given me so many opportunities and I've listed so many things and I really should be so happy. And yet I did this Avera. But then you also have to defend yourself. And in the midst of all this, you hope that Hashem will give you some words that will help in your defense. You know, it's like, you imagine a defense attorney saying, what do you want from this disadvantaged boy? He, he, he's got, it, the whole system is stacked against him. Are we just to punish him because of our failures? In other words, there's a criticism. But the point is here, Hashem is sending it. Hashem is sending the criticism. If it's coming from Hashem, it can only be good. It's got to be something that's spontaneous that Hashem is sending to the person. And when you say those kinds of words, it means, and I really want to be exonerated. But that's not only to defeat Hashem, because you also are giving excuses and showing that you were wrong and you're guilty too. But it all brings it all out. In other words, the, the claims are the words of the defense attorney. Okay. And the excuses are the words of the defense attorney. And you hope Hashem puts the words of the defense attorney. Let me give an example that I think will make this a little clearer. I don't think I mentioned it yet. Sometimes I get to play chess with my eight-year-old grandson. He's a pretty smart boy, but I'm still a little smarter than him. So we're going to play chess. Now, what is it that I really would like? For him to get better. That one day I'd like him to get better and one day to beat me. But if I just make stupid moves, that doesn't teach him anything. I mean, I could, you know, expose my queen and get her knocked off in the first minute. I could just move without thinking and he could defeat me, but that, that's not going to make him a better player. So what do I do? So what I do is when he makes a move, he takes his hand off the piece. And I see that's the dumbest move he could have made. I just say, are you sure you want to make that move? That's all I say. He already knows by now, if I say that, he better change it. Because I wouldn't say it, but I'm not going to tell him what it is. All of a sudden, he comes with a move, and now I'm in big trouble. Now my queen is under attack. 
So now you're gonna. So now I, I gave him the ability to attack my queen. He didn't. He didn't think of that on his own. How did he get that? Because I want him to be better and to defeat me on his own. So Rabbi, you're waiting for him to say. So that's, and then Rabbi. I get a lot of pleasure from that because now my grandson's getting smart. You know. So in a similar way, that's what Hashem is doing. Hashem is giving us opportunity to say certain words that can defeat a Kodesh Baruch Hu, but they're words that come from Hashem. At the end of the day, my grandson can't say, oh, I was so smart, I beat Zadie. I don't know, if they wouldn't have said anything, you would have lost again. But he just said enough that you could say something on your own. And that's what we really want Hashem to do for us. And we pray when we start. We say, Hashem, give me the words from you that can attack what you're doing. Not that I even understand how to attack you. And that becomes the part of the defense. And when the person starts defending himself, but it's the words that Hashem gave him, that's out of chutzpah. So you, you have to come in very, very... Um, not angry, very happy with that Kodesh Baruch Hu. And the word, and you're praying, Hashem, just have the words come out. And those words will embolden you to feel, yeah, yeah, I got a chance. And Hashem wants to lose. He wants the prosecution to lose. But only fairly. Which means, okay, you got all these claims against me. And you got these excuses. But remember, as we said a few weeks ago, but the bottom line is, what changes are you going to make now? The change you're going to make now is to get close to me. Usually when we criticize people, we're not interested in getting closer. Now, there is a concept of constructive criticism that people think they're doing, but mostly not. Because Baruch Hu is allowing us to have the discourse of constructive criticism and hopefully he gives it to us. And you say certain words that you don't understand. You know, you weren't even thinking of saying them. And Hashem puts it in your mouth. They say, yeah, you know, maybe, 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 maybe Hashem is right. That, that there's a claim against him. You know, it wasn't my fault that you gave me parents who were uh, not mentally balanced. It's not my fault that they were influenced by society. So why did you give me? It must be if you gave me such a life, that means you expect me to succeed, huh? So aren't you going to help me? Doesn't that sound different than just blaming a shim for everything? But then you balance that with an excuse. And I'm trying to excuse my baby. Okay, we got to stop. It's two o'clock. We got to have a mincha to be continued. But we ended this chapter and we will flow into Matlaot which are the excuses that will balance both ends of that. Okay, Shkayat, everybody. How are you? Don't you know I'm a given class?